Welcome to This Is My Architecture. My name is Yazid, and with me today is Ian Henderson from Salesforce. Ian, welcome to This Is My Architecture video. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, Salesforce? Yeah, certainly. So Salesforce is probably best known for our uh, cloud-based CRM product. Uh, today, we're going to talk specifically about Service Cloud and how we've integrated that to Amazon Connect. That's great. Yeah, so I see this uh, uh, really cool architecture. I see some uh, serverless via Lambda, Lex, Poly, S3, Kinesis. Um, walk us through the steps, and I also see a user with a, a phone there. So walk us through the steps. What happens? Indeed. So let's let's kind of walk through. If a if a user, a customer wants to call a contact center, maybe they're going to try and do a little bit of self service, uh, and then eventually we're going to they're going to get connected to a uh, an agent who's going to help them with whatever their needs are. Okay. So. Customer calls from their phone over good old PSTN, and that comes into Connect. And what Connect does really initially is, is to marshal all the, the things that happen next. So it's basically the contact flow, the decision making, and uh, marshaling all these other resources that are going on here in AWS. So one of the very first things that, that Connect is going to do uh, is going to use uh, Lambda to reach out to Salesforce via one, you know, standard APIs or standard CRUD object APIs. Mm -hmm. And it's going to pull some data in from Salesforce, uh, the Lambda, and then ultimately into Connect that can be used for decision making. So, you know, based on the ANI, the phone number that the customer is calling on, who are they? What's their what's their contact information? So initially, uh, the first thing we can do with that is then use Lex to give a personalized greeting to that customer. So, hi Yazid, thanks for calling. Basically, that kind of information. From there, we can use a whole bunch of stuff. So, you know, we talked about the contact record being one of the the, the, the easiest one. You know, open cases, account information, any of that can be pulled back uh, through Lambda and used in, the, in the, the Connect contact flow. And then the interaction with the customer is done via Lex and Poly. Great. So um, Lambda, I see Lambda there. Um, why Lambda specifically and not EC2, for instance? Can you uh, elaborate a little bit more? Yeah, yeah, a couple of really good reasons there. Uh, you think about most call centers, I mean, from a from a technical and cost perspective, call centers are really peaky loads. You know, there's typically very high call volumes at certain times of day or certain days of the week. So Monday lunch times are a pretty common high high call period. So, you know, particularly even if you're running a 24 by 7 operation, you will have very low call volumes at some point and very high call volumes at other points. So having something that can respond to that from a from a you know scalability and, and load perspective is is really really beneficial versus having a whole bunch of hardware sitting around doing nothing for for a good chunk of the day. Cool. Um, and when it comes to Lex and Poly, um, uh, what happens? So once once the customer gets that greeting, custom mm -hmm. greeting, that, then what happens after that? Can you kind of help us uh, understand yeah, the second sure. step? So you know, Lex particularly understanding what the customer is asking for. So it's in it, you know, we see it's an intent-driven architecture as well. So we can use uh, more more Lambda calls here back out to Salesforce to pull more data here to understand the context of what's going on as well. So you know, if they've got an open case. Um, uh, the Connect can uh, can use that to make a decision. Lex can then use that to, to you know, narrow down the intents that are that are potentially in scope here and figure out what the customer wants to wants to ultimately do. So, Lex and Poly is really you know in, in combination with Connect is is how the customer would self serve. You know we're using the data in Salesforce to drive that context to drive the transactions back out again as well. If we if we've got automated updates for example that we want to push from Lex to Lambda into let's say changing an address on account. For example, would be a would be a simple request that you could self serve and push all the way through. Cool, like that would be one case. Another case could be um, if a customer would call and say, "Can I have an update on my case and existing cases?" That's something exactly like cases to order information. That's a really really common use case and very simple. Then you know, rather than bothering a, an agent with that, you can just you know push that through Lex and Poly for self serve. And you know that comes back to another reason why Lambda is a really good fit here. Um, the sort of speed of innovation that you can work out there. If you want to start doing more here and offering more self-service capabilities, or even more, you know, transactional capabilities that are self-serve enabled uh, via Lex and Poly, then again, you're not having to, to spend the time to, to spin up the infrastructure and uh, and all the, the the attendant, you know, code and skill sets that you would need to manage that. So uh, whenever I think about calls and call center business in general, I think about scale, right? Especially peak volume. Mm -hmm. How is uh, how are you guys handling that today? It's um, <coughs> a really, really good question. Um, so, you know, obviously uh, our platform is inherently massively scalable as well. Obviously, as is as is uh, AWS. So, that said, there are still some things that that can uh, help to deal with those very large volumes. You know, the scales that we're working at is all the way from SMB, where it might be a, a handful of call center agents, up to the you know very large call centers, where it's tens of thousands of agents, tens of thousands of calls in a, in a given period of time. So, you know, if you are at that very large end of the scale. 
one of the, the the potential pitfalls you can fall into is lots of, 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 of Lambda calls yep. going on here, lots of very small calls that, that can start to become a bottleneck. And likewise, you know, if hit, hitting limits on either side of these API calls. So we have a capability within Salesforce called Flow that you can use to, um, you know, you call a flow and then the flow can still allow you to have a configurable way of gathering the data that you want to pass back into Lambda and ultimately interconnect, uh, but it will serve, basically you can do one call, do a whole bunch of, of data gathering and some, some decision making on the Salesforce side to then just bring back the, the smaller amounts of data that's more relevant to, to the particular to conversation. The user, yeah. yeah. Awesome, that's great. Um, this is good so far. Uh, tell us a little bit more what happens here on this side. I see S3, mm -hmm. Kinesis, CloudWatch, assuming you're doing some kind of monitoring and mm -hmm. login and another Lambda and Softphone. Tell us a little bit more. Sure. So if you think about the, mm. the conversation that's going on here, so the customer is self-serving, they're, they're going through the connect flow and using Lux and Poly to, to interact. While that's going on, we're doing a whole bunch of other stuff in the background as well. So um, going directly into S3, uh, we have the call recordings as well. So you know, if you're in a, um, either for just quality assurance or if you're in a, in a, in a uh, vertical that requires audit, for example, mm -hmm. call recordings are a really common requirement. Um, so they're automatically pushed into S3. Likewise, there's a whole bunch of other data that's going to be useful for reporting as well. So we want that to, to be available to us. We're also, you know, through through Kinesis, just because of the higher the higher volumes and, and greater frequency, we have what was called CTR, call trace record, uh, as well as agent events that are happening as well. And then finally in CloudWatch we have this connect contact flow can log and, and you know you can deal with if there's a drop call, if you've got certain uh, points of, of abandonment, you want to log a lot of those those data points for, for uh, usage later. So we've got the, uh, the uh, call control flow, uh, the contact flow uh, information going into CloudWatch as well. Go ahead. I was just going to say, so with the reason Lambda's on here as well is that we want all that information in Salesforce, or you know, as much of it as we can do. So back to your question about scale, there's this huge amount of information being being gathered and created through all these interactions, and we want to be able to basically take the the the, the right things, the right amount of information via Lambda again back through our API calls into our objects. Now the reason we want to do that, you know, obviously it, it keeps the information within the CRM at the right level. You know, we're not dealing with all of this stuff. You know, some of which might be used for operational monitoring, some of it might be used for more business level reporting, which is more what we want on the Salesforce side. So um, the fact that we can aggregate across all these different services and then basically pick and choose what we think is you know valuable to the business, rather than just shoving all of this data somewhere else, either like, getting lost or it can't be aggregated or it be just becomes noise then we, can, we, we do a really good job of basically filtering all that out. We want all that data over here you know, into our core objects because then that automatically enables our dashboards uh, and then you know, subsequently Einstein as well to, to power all the other capabilities that we have in the platform. So the, the business reporting, the out-of-the-box reporting, customer reporting, and then the, any of the uh, AI-driven Einstein features as well. So you know, even, if a, even if a call never actually lands to an agent in Salesforce, the fact that the call has happened, the fact that the customer has been able to self-serve or they've abandoned, all of that's really, really important to us to drive our AI modeling around uh, you know, customer satisfaction or case reasoning that we're doing over there as well. Awesome. Speaking of AI, <coughs> uh, with regards to recording, I see that you start recording mm. S3. Uh, uh, are you doing anything else uh, with recording? We are. So that that information can also then be um, transcribed and comprehend. You know, run through transcribe and comprehend as well. So the the neat thing that, that does for us is it saves the agent a huge amount of time. So by the time it gets to, to over here, we can automatically push that transcription through into, into the interaction log, which is attached to the case, which when you think about when we eventually, you know, we'll talk about the soft phone in a second, but when a human being is handling this call, they don't need to sit there and type a whole bunch of call notes. We can automatically push that transcription through there. And again, feeding um, from Comprehend the intent, you know, either intent directly from Lex or from the sentiment of the, the conversation going on here. Again, that can be fed over in uh, via Lambda into uh, our core object models for, for Einstein as well. So we, think we can use that to drive some of the other um, you know, AI-driven capabilities for next best action, next best offer, yeah. sentiment analysis, and, and you know, potential customer churn, that kind of thing. Awesome, great. And uh, it looks like Softphone. Softphone is something that uh, you have here. What, what does it do? W what is a Softphone? Yeah. So yeah. the Softphone is the last sort of link in the chain. So we've been through the customer, the calls in, they've, they've been through a self-serve, we've captured a whole bunch of data and great stuff that's during automatically during that conversation, but they want to 
to speak to an agent. And the soft phone is what enables that. So the soft phone is hosted over on the AWS side. And what the soft phone does essentially is uh, it talks to you know, really three of our, our critical APIs in this case, different from our, our, our normal object APIs. Um, so the open CTA API, what that does is give you most of the heavy lifting for a screen pop. If you've worked in the call center, you've, you've seen a screen pop when the call comes in. We want to take all this great information, all the context, and pop that up in front of the agent so they can handle it. Um, the other API that's relevant here is Omni. So Omni Channel uh, is our capability for routing digital channels. So you know the non-voice stuff, text messages, web chats, emails, that kind of thing. Uh, and the really important thing that Omni does here is coordinate back to, to connect to the soft phone as to what the agent's, a given agent's status is. So if they're busily working on a chat, we don't necessarily want to push them a phone call. So we call that omnipresence syncing, um, and that's where the Omni API comes in. Awesome, that's great. So the soft phone will only kick in after the user has uh, you know, voluntarily said, hey, I want to speak to a representative. Exactly, yep. To, okay. yep. And the final yeah. part that it's, it's managing as well is that actual conversation all the way up here through WebRTC. Um, you know, we're not pushing the audio, we're not pushing that WebRTC channel through Salesforce. We don't want to be a, a bottleneck there. Basically, the, the OpenCTI API allows you to, to just surface that directly into our UI without having to pass that through our infrastructure just from you know, point to point. Cool, cool, this is awesome. Um, so I have a couple of questions, mm -hmm. kind of general questions. One is, um, uh, how did you do this in the past? Tell us a little bit more about uh, how were you able to conduct or have this infrastructure in the past? And the second one, um, do you need today, if I'm a developer mm -hmm. for instance, right, um, can I be able to uh, build something similar like without having any knowledge of, you know, uh, mm -hmm. technology of like, you know, uh, PT, uh, PSTN, or you know, yeah. telephony, so to speak. Sure. I mean, you know, past, I mean, it's still today, a lot of customers are doing this sort of thing on premise. So that means that you're, you know, you've got an IVR, you've got an ACD, you've got service stood up to do the integration, you're having to write all this code. You know, and then that comes to your second point as well, which is you've got then somebody who needs, you need someone who's a voice expert to program your IVR. You know, Lex and Polly handles that for you now. You then also need somebody who's a, more like a web developer who's an expert in using APIs. Whereas now, because we're, we're sort of abstracting away a lot of that complexity around the voice side of things, you know, if you want to, building these Lambda calls into Salesforce, it's, it really is kind of standard Node.js type of programming. It's a really base, yeah, relatively yeah. basic web developer skill set yeah. these days. Um, so, you know, the, from a, an alternative, the, the other problem being that, you know, with us being 100% in the cloud, historically, if you're doing this on-premise, then you've got all the, the, the security issues and firewalls to manage routing the, the audio into one place and the, the, uh, the browser somewhere else. So, um, doing this cloud to cloud, ironically, is actually a lot yeah. simpler than it would be having a sort of mixed model that a lot of customers have had to deal with in the past. And what I would add is integration too, right? So, being in the cloud allows you to integrate with multiple other services. Uh, S3, Kinesis, CloudWatch, right? So you can kind of exactly. add the building blocks yep. as you need to. Yeah, I mean, in the, in historically, you'd have had to sort of piece this together either, you know, from different vendors or at the very least, it's different sets of infrastructure that then, you know, the innovation speed that you can move at and what you can deliver to the business is kind of constrained by how quickly you can jam stuff in a data center. True, so, true. you know, having that um, essentially pre-integrated, having those services there makes a huge true. difference. Yeah. Awesome. Ian, thank you for joining us today. And thank you for watching This Is My Architecture.